for good, isn't it? Yeah, of course. I mean, there's a chance here, there's a vacancy, the titles are vacant, and there's an opening there for a new star to be born in Britain anyway to come in and take one of the two titles. Gary, it's a classic division. If we wrote the situations vacant column for this one, you could say something like, going to travel, going to meet some interesting people, fight them and earn a lot of money. It sounds like a really glamorous job. Doesn't yeah, it? it is. It's all glamorous. It's, but you got to, the, the, the whole idea is you've got to win it first and then you get the, the chance to do that. British title tonight with Harry Darmy looking to establish himself as the man for the future. What about Darmy so far, Gary? He is the champ, but he feels he owes us a performance tonight after his last title defence. Does that tell you something about how important it is to him to impress tonight at the Aston Villa Ledger Centre? Yeah, I think it's quite important for him. I mean, he's come through, he's won the title, he's done well winning the title. This is the... the, the, the the fight that he expected last time uh, and he's looking to perform tonight. Challenger is on home ground though, Spencer McCracken had to wait and wait. Is he capable of putting it all together when at last the chance comes? Yeah, he's more than capable, he has a chance, it's there for him to do, he's now getting the chance, he has to go there and do it. So that's our top of the bill coming a little bit later on, Dami against Spencer McCracken for the British title. First tonight though, here it is the Commonwealth and a vacant title up for grabs. Here's what happened at the weigh-in, Sean Sullivan in New Zealand going to the scales first on. The most experienced of the quartet of welterweights here. 146 pounds, 2 ounces. Couldn't be better. And Jawade Kalik. Sudden opportunity for him, and he did actually need two trips to the scales, Gary. Would you put that down to nervousness? Yes. Yeah, it could be nervousness. He could just have, like, you weigh yourself with it. And I set of scales before, and the set of scales, these scales might have been out, he might not have been in, he might have just got there before. And, uh, but I, I just think it was his second trip. It depends on how long ago it was his second trip. He's on the way anyway. An opportunity like this is all new to him. Is it different when you do go into championship class? Well, completely different. I mean, this is his first time. He's, he's had relatively like short experience, but it's a big chance for him to go out there and win a title. More from Gary as we go here. Lots of championship action to squeeze in tonight at the Aston Villa Ledger Centre. A ringside and ready to go. It's Ian Dark joined by Glenn McCrory and Adam Smith. And our Master of Ceremonies is in the ring and waiting. John McDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring now from Auckland, New Zealand, Sean Sullivan. Well, it's the second time this year that we've seen the gritty New Zealander, Sean Sullivan. 31 years of age, he was beaten by Scott Dixon in a previous attempt to win this Commonwealth World Awake title. That was back in February, but his story about this is that he had a particularly good Christmas last year and had to lose two stone in four weeks leading up to the fight, and he wasn't right for it. This time, he says, everything's perfect. Well, Ian, that's a very good Christmas, two stone. That's an excellent Christmas. But, you know, these preparations should have been better. Hopefully, he's learned his lesson. You know, he's getting a second chance. Maybe he can make up for it this time. He's from David Tour country, Auckland, in New Zealand. He knows to her, and sometimes they've worked in the same gym, but uh, they're from different stables. But he has won 42 of 52 fights, this fellow. Very experienced, and this time he says he intends to take his chance. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring now from Nottingham, Jawaid Kali. There's his fans, 150 of them. Supporting the Nottingham cab driver Jawaid Khalik tonight. It's a surprise chance for him. It's come out of the blue and it's arisen directly out of his move to be with the Tommy Gilmore camp. I think he's a bit shocked himself. He was with uh, the Brendan Ingle team before that. And just look at the support. He's got uh, Pakistani ancestry. His parents are from Pakistan. He was born in Reading, and he's based in the Meadows area of Nottingham. It's only his 15th fight tonight. Will his temperament and class stand the test? Well, it's a good opportunity for him. He's got lots of support here, so if he's going to have a, a chance, this is his best one, and you know, he should do all right here. He has to take this opportunity, really, Kelly. Otherwise, he could be back in obscurity. 30 years of age, Sullivan is a year older, about the same height, about the same reach. Kali, interestingly, two trips to the scales, and he's ranked 
I noticed by Boxing Monthly, one of the trade magazines, that light middleweight. So, could it be a little bit tight at the weight? Well, it's just a question I leave hanging in the air. No more than that. Sullivan's been a pro for nine years in Kelly for three. Sullivan's had many, many more fights, boxed many, many more rounds. Kalik is a bit of a puncher. Look at that, 64% knockout ratio. It's quite hard. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to Aston Villa Leisure Centre for tonight's championship boxing. Proudly presented by Ringside Boxing Promotions and sponsored here by PrinceNassim.com and MatronSport.com. A very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live and exclusive here on Sky Sports. You've joined us for the very best ringside seat in the business. Let's get the action underway then, ladies and gentlemen. This is 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant Commonwealth Walterweight Championship. All the officials have been appointed by the Commonwealth Council in association with the British Boxing Board of Control here present with us at ringside, our supervisor, Robert Smith of London, and our steward in charge, Nigel Underwood. Our timekeeper at the bell from Shropshire is Tony Dunkley and our referee in charge of the action and one of the leading referees in the world today from Kent, Mr. Larry O'Connell. They are the officials, here are the contestants. Firstly, and introducing to you, he's fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks and weighing in at 10 stone, six pounds and two ounces. Bringing a 52 fight record, 42 wins, 19 inside the scheduled distance, nine losses and one no contest coming to the ring as the current champion of new zealand please welcome irish sean Sullivan. and across the ring fighting under the blue corner he's wearing the white trunks and weighed in at 10 stone six pounds 15 ounces bringing a 14 fight record 12 wins nine inside the scheduled distance one loss one draw coming to the ring as the reigning Midland area, a welterweight champion and former ABA champion. He's from Nottingham. Please welcome Jawaid Halim. <laughs> well, sports fans and Sky fans, this is 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant Commonwealth welterweight championship. Jawaid. And it could be an interesting fight too. Larry O'Connell, the ref. Round. Good luck to both. Keep your punches on target. Obey my commands at all times. And good luck. May the best man win. God bless. Well, he's the nervous type, Joaid Kalik. Let's hope he doesn't freeze here. Sullivan will not be phased at all. He's been around. He's fought good fighters. His last fight, in fact, round. Sullivan, was uh, a second fight against the world-rated Shannon Taylor. He lost that one pretty easily, and his left eye was closed for most of the fight, he tells me. First big fight, this, for Joade Kalik from Nottingham. How will he fare? He stands pretty tall, and we've noticed he's a bit too easy to hit in the past, Glenn. Yes, that's one of his problems. He can't really afford that in this one. He's got to keep the head and the shoulder's just moving a little more than he normally does. But he's got to use that height, that reach, and his boxing ability. Nice stiff jab from Kalik. He can usually take a punch. Stamina would be a question mark too. He's never been beyond six rounds before. Kalik in the white trunks, the Nottingham fighter. The Kiwi from Auckland in New Zealand, Sean Sullivan. on the tail of the tape but there looks to be fairly significant reach advantage here for Kalik. Yes, the deers. Um, Sullivan also pretty upright, a little more of a jerky style. Doesn't get that much of a rhythm, Sullivan. Well, Kalik will be looking to get his shots on pretty early. Sullivan may find that Kalik hits harder than Scott Dixon, who he met in his previous attempt to pick up this title. Dixon vacating this Commonwealth Worldweight Championship to move up to light middleweight where he's twice now come a cropper including on Saturday against Anthony Farnell 
So Sullivan's lost to Dixon. Doesn't look that great, does it now? No, it doesn't after those results. Well, I think it's important really for Khalid to start well. He needs to let Sullivan feel the power, Good. get his confidence, and then grow on that. Better work early from Khalid. One of these long armed punches who gets a bit of leverage into the shots. Using the jab quite well. He's trained now by Jason Shinfield, who is a successful young trainer coming through. Again, good body shot from Kelly. He's looking for that left hook to the body colleague. It's very casual in this first round, just putting a steady pressure on Sullivan. Quite a laid-back attitude, but he definitely won the round, Joe Kelly. <sighs> the new cordless system from Bosch. One battery to power three tools. Power for pumping up. Power for drilling or screw driving. And power for lighting up. The power to do more. The new cordless system from Bosch. Welcome back to Aston Villa tonight. Who has Kalik beaten to get this chance? Well, he did stop Takaloo, the rising light middleweight prospect in four rounds. And he also stopped Dennis Berry, who can be quite dangerous Four in six. When he started, the better. It's a relaxed style that Khalid's got, but he was getting the better punches on. Nice left two to the body and a few good overhand rights. Second round for the Commonwealth welterweight crown. This championship, 108 years old. Black trunks of the New Zealander Sullivan, white of Khalid from Nottingham. In that first round, Sullivan found it hard to get in range to get off any punches. The league's got to put that jab out with authority. That can be a good scoring punch for him and keep Sullivan off balance, but he needs to really force it out. pretty calm in there nice little right hand just a little blotch on the cheek of Sullivan I noticed Khalik who grew up around Nassim Mohammed and Johnny Nelson and Ryan Rhodes and Jonathan Thaxton and the like at the Brendan Ingle camp in Sheffield now trying his luck elsewhere Just pushing out that jab a little. That's a very good right hand, though. He really did pick that punch very well. Yes, he is just pushing that jab out too much. He needs to let it go with a bit more force. But the right hand was a nice punch. If he's going to do anything in the business, this is the kind of fight he's got to be winning. Yes, I, I think you're right there. I think it's a, it's a good match for him, really, if he is going to move on and progress could be that Kalik is one of the better kept secrets in British boxing certainly his little army of fans who've come here in numbers today will be uh, thinking that he'd like to think it too but he has to prove it here oh it's a right hand gets through from Sullivan his best punch so far well, we said he can be open and prove there that he, he is. Just needs to stop moving that upper body more and get a bit busier. Sullivan just having some success here in bustling Kalik up a little. That's where he wants to be, close in, making it rough. Kalik will be happier with these long shots from the outside, these scything shots. 
Good body shot from Kelly. With the help of your digit here and open, you can buy Open's number one games, DVDs, videos, and books for only half price. So go on, treat someone special this Christmas. Open, how very useful. Just press the button. Kodak Advantix cameras, what an easy way to take pictures and a great idea for Christmas from only $39.99. Welcome back. There is uh, Jason Shinfield. There's Nick, uh, Nicky and Jason Booth, British champions and brothers. Chris Aston and Benny King working in the corner. I did like his version of Stand By Me, Benny King. It's not about cuts my knee, either. <laughs> it's round three. I'd like to see Kelly with a little bit more urgency now and try and box with more authority. You know, he can catch Sullivan, but he just needs to have a little bit more devil. Just worrying for you, uh, for Kelly in that last round. Sullivan was starting to get a little closer. Just for a little period towards the end of the round. Well, I think that's the reason he needs to up his work rate, Kelly. He was just a little bit too relaxed in the last session. He does have quite fast hands and finds some unusual angles for his punches. He's definitely the superior technician of these two. Sullivan has only ever been stopped once in his career. In 52 fights, and that was way back in 1993. a brawl here, Kalik is not obliging him, he's on his bike most of the time, just finding the odd different angle, it's a very unusual style he has, a bit too upright for most tastes I would think. But he's having some success here, he's moving quite well, giving Sullivan a few angles and keeping the shots going from different angles. You can definitely see the Brendan Ingall influence, can't you, in his style? Yes, you can. Uh, the good movement, side to side. Uh, the punches coming in from different angles. Plenty of lateral movement. Sullivan finding him frustrating to fight. Hitting the air a lot, three times, in fact, there. Again, that sharp right-hand counter from Kalik, who's winning everything at the moment. The New Zealander looking a little bemused by what's in front of him. He's trying to push forward Sullivan, but not getting his punches off and not landing very well. That's a definitely a Cali ground. Christmas time, mistletoe and wine, children singing Christian rhyme, with logs on the fire, gifts on the tree, a time to rejoice in the good that we see.
live golf action for you, and it's another big one next week. The Ned Bank Sun City Challenge, a first prize of $2 million this year. The big names will be there, surprise, surprise. A strong European contingent, Westwood, Montgomery and Clark included. Exclusively live coverage beginning Thursday, 9.30 Sky Sports 1. British welterweight title after the Commonwealth welterweight battle. And it really is the week of the welterweights because there's an IBO welterweight championship fight at the uh, weekend involving Darren Bruce and Willie Wise who holds a victory over Julio Cesar Chavez. That comes up on Saturday. Kalik in the white here. Looking to continue the big Nottingham boxing revival going on at the moment. After the British championship triumphs of Nicky and Jason Booth. City that also gave you Wally Swift and Dave Needham among others and I think Harold Graham used to be based there before moving on to Sheffield and using that as his base. Well it's just the superior technical ability of Kelly that's getting him through at this moment. Just better movement, keeping the punches going out. He's doing it quite nicely at the moment. Proving quite elusive and finding unusual angles for his punches. Still looking for that left hook to the body, Cali, having a bit of success with it. It's quite a clever exhibition so far, albeit in an unorthodox style of the hit and not be hit style, isn't it? Well, he's just peppering away with shots at Sullivan. Nothing too dramatic going in, but just picking up the points, all very comfortable. Combinations this time, and then away again. Kalik has only been beaten once in 14 fights. No disgrace in that either against Frédéric Klaus, competent French fighter. That was back in 1998. Apparently he lacked a bit of self-belief that night. It just could have been a novelty type thing. Well, this is what he needs to do. He needs to be a bit more dominant. Let the punches go with more authority. Still keep out in range where his long punches have a better effect. Sullivan at the moment is really struggling to land anything that means much. Kalik is the boss. One problem for Sullivan is he thought he was coming over here to fight uh, Darren Bruce until a week or two ago. And of course there were no videos around of Jawade Kalik so they had to read about him and get into the internet, that sort of thing. It's not the best preparation. And he's still boxing the better and winning the rounds, Kalik. So let's go down now to hear about our next fight tonight, the British Worldweight Championship fight. Champion Harry Darmy against Spencer McCracken, and down in the Darmy dressing room now is Ed Robinson. Harry, you looked very impressive when you won the title, but you struggled in your first defence. Which Harry Darmy are we going to see this evening? It'd be much improved since last time, but uh, that was just a bad day at the office, and uh, this is another day because you can't afford any slip-ups tonight. Spencer McCracken, very hungry young fighter, he should really push you. He's a mandatory challenger, so he's a good fighter, and uh, I'll just come out on top. Now, I know you didn't used to take boxing that seriously. How seriously have you taken this fight? I take all my fights serious. Like I said, last one was just a blip. This is a different day. So what's going to happen this evening? I'm going to win. Thank you very much. Good luck. Ten Second defence of the title tonight for Harry Darmy from Gravesend in Kent. He's had no favours on the way Second through. Down, round He's had his chance. Here's round five, Commonwealth welterweight crown. And it's vacant at the moment, but Jawade Kalik has started as if he means to walk away with the Commonwealth belt tonight. Plenty of time to go, though, and remember, and I repeat this, Kalik has never been beyond six rounds. Well, he's doing very comfortably at the minute. He's not being pushed or fighting at a pace that he might not be used to. So if he can keep it like this, you know, he should be fine in the later stages. They've worked on his stamina a bit, uh, Jason 
Shinfield and the team. They've had him doing hill work and even some track sprinting in Nottingham in the build-up to this fight. Can Sullivan change the pattern of this? Is he good enough? That's a good right hand again from Kelly. Well, he's miss missing with an awful lot of his punches, Sullivan. His timing's completely out, not getting through with much. And when he does miss, he's being made to pay quite often by Kelly. He's looking marked up around the face, the New Zealander as well now. Kalik for a man who hasn't had a chance at this kind of level is making a pretty good fist of this so far. Fairly good variety. And he does punch with a bit of snap, it looks to me, as well. Yes, he does. He's got that nice rhythm, just keeping the punches coming. He's pleasing his fans. They're pretty vocal. Has to be careful though that he just doesn't make one bad mistake Sullivan had scored seven wins in a row before losing first of all to Scott Dixon and then uh, the world rated Shannon Taylor <laughs> damaged by the right eye for Sullivan Space is beginning to show signs of these punches that have been rammed home by Joey Kelly. Well, he's still trying to cover some ground and put some pressure on Sullivan, but for the most part, out of range, and you know the punches just floating in the air. Kelly is too fast and too clever for him at the moment. Much too clever. Welcome to Armchair Banking with Open Plan from The Woolwich. Via your own CV. Ready? Open Plan puts you in the picture about your finances at the touch of a button with a summary statement of all your accounts. Then check your balances, move money, even pay bills. All from your armchair. For a demo, press your interactive button and choose Open. Or contact us now. Go on. You're either with us or without. Everything so far here to Jawed Kalik of Nottingham on the left of your picture as he goes after this Commonwealth welterweight crown. Look at that, 32 to 12 jabs landed, Glenn. Yes, a lot more. I'm sure that Sullivan's throwing a lot, but he's missing so many. See the jabs just landing in the air. White trunks, remember, of Kalik. Looking to put his name on this. Commonwealth welterweight belts and famous names have had it like the late Eddie Thomas, Brian Kervis, Ralph Charles, Colin Jones, Lloyd Hannigan, Gary Jacobs is with us tonight, Eamon Lochran in recent times. Very good belt to have. And one with a bit of history. It's not one of these uh, newfangled, fabricated affairs. Well, we wondered beforehand, maybe unfairly, whether Kalik might freeze. Not a sign of it. No, he's been very relaxed, kept a, a nice pace, and been very cool under the, the bit pressure that Sullivan's tried to impose on him. Just a little bit of minor bruising under the left eye of Kalik. Nothing for him to worry about. Watch the use of the head, says. Larry O'Connell switching the angle again Kelly hasn't had really a moment's bother in there so far has he he hasn't at, at every moment you know he's looked at he knows what what he's doing and something just hasn't been really 
able to exert any decent pressure. Good body shots from Kalik. Good enough to be an ABA champion, English ABA champion, I should say, shouldn't I, these days, 1996. That was a bit of a shock at the time. And England international as well, he's served his time. Interestingly, Glenn, um, Tommy Gilmore, the Scottish manager promoter, signed Joaid Kalik sight unseen before his last fight against Trevor Smith. He'd heard a few things and thought, well, that's good enough for me, I'll take a chance. Signed him. Here he is, Commonwealth Waterweight title fight and winning it at the moment. Well, he must have heard that the word of the right people, the very knowledgeable Tommy Gilmore. And obviously got the, the right connections to get his man straight in there. Does have his chin in the air a bit, Kalik.